Welcome back to the Hoodats Pod, everyone. I'm Kane Janus, your host, and I appreciate it if you're here because, man, it is very sad right now for the Saints. I, I honestly had a hard time trying to record this video because of how I feel about this team right now. I'm just kidding. Um, but if you want to see me continue to be in pain about this team, hit that subscribe button, and let's talk about what's going on with the Saints. So. If you've been living under a rock for the past week or so, or just in the past year and a half or whatever, um, you would probably not know that P. Carmichael is not a, a fan favorite, to say the least. No one likes him, aside from, I guess, Pete Carmichael and, I guess, Sean Payton. I guess that's what we can say. Um, Dennis Allen, after the game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, after a game in which the Saints scored nine points, had no touchdowns, had no offensive production at all, Dennis Allen, after the uh, press conference on the game Sunday, mentioned that um, they will talk about and look at everything, and maybe they will make some changes to the offensive staff. The way he worded it, I didn't say it exactly the same way, but it sounded like, okay, maybe a change is coming. We got our hopes up, like, oh, maybe, you know, Ronald Curry could maybe come in and call plays, even though he's never done it before. And then Dennis Allen shows up Monday and says that they are not making a change to the offensive play calling or anything like that. And if you want to know my exact reaction to me finding out the news that Pete Carmichael and Dennis, that Dennis Allen was not going to make a change, um, I actually, this is what it actually looked like. Right, right, <laughs> right, 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 Hell no! Y'all got me fucked up! Hell no! 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 won't try something else um but obviously there is a reason why and there's a reason that we're not in the nfl coaching and why i'm on a couch talking to a camera and you're listening to me on a couch talking to a camera and they're in the nfl so obviously we're missing something here so let's try to dissect why the saints just won't make a change why dennis allen and mickey loomis won't or why mickey loomis won't step in and say hey you need to make some changes why why is nothing being fixed so dennis allen not making changes pete carmichael staying the play color as of now according to dennis allen why won't they just f fire him now i don't think they are ever going to i guess fire him in season i think if they were to go a different direction they would keep him on the staff but give the play calling duties to someone else um, I don't like the way he calls plays, obviously, but I do think he adds value during the week for preparation and film and analysis or breaking down film or finding stuff to, that helps. Maybe that's why Sean Payton liked him so much. He was just kind of like a yes man to whoever was calling plays. And that's just kind of who he is. He's a yes man, and it just seems like the second he took over control and didn't have Drew Brees, he just he folded. So... My guess is that the reason the Saints didn't make a change is one, they didn't want to make a change just for change sake. Um, obviously, they're in NFL. They know they're doing more than we are, I would hope. Um, so they probably just don't want, want to make a change just to make a change. And when I watched the film, and we will have a film breakdown tomorrow or Thursday whenever um, I drop it and record it, um, it wasn't just the play calling. The The players have dirty hands, too. The players were making mistakes, missing blocks, missing assignments. Chris Olave's effort was shit the whole game. I don't know what's going on there. Hopefully, it's, it's just one week. Um, maybe the the scheme or the, the way the week was going, they were setting up the... They're setting up the plays and designs and stuff like that for Jameis Winston to be at quarterback. And then Derek Carr comes in and you have the same scheme and the same play designs or whatever. And Olave didn't like it. Um, I don't know. That's neither here nor there. Why didn't they fire or relieve Pete Carmichael? My only guess is, one, if you relieve him of his play calling duties now, who are you going to find? 
October who's better, I guess. I, I really don't think that's ever worked out uh, for any team that's relieved their coordinator. Aside from maybe the Panthers last season, but Matt Rule, I believe, was calling plays, and he got fired, so it's a little bit different. Um, so you probably have two options if you relieve Pete Carmichael of play calling duties. I don't think they'll fire him. I think they would take away his play calling duties and role and give it to someone else, but they'd keep him for the week preparation or make him like an offensive assistant or passing game coordinator or something like that. So their only other options, if they did that, would be Ronald Curry, who... I think a lot of people like him. The Saints like him. He had an offensive coordinator interview, I believe, with the Bucks, or he canceled it. I can't remember exactly, but he did this past off season. Um, the only problem with him, well, one, he's never called plays really before in the NFL. He did call two preseason games, and that was about it. And I thought the play calling was okay. It was the Chargers and Texans game this past season or this past preseason. So I didn't think it was like terrible, but I mean. That it might be better than what we're seeing now, but obviously that's preseason. It's a little bit different than regular season. Um, so Ronald Curry would be option number one. And the only other option is probably John Gruden, which would probably cause a riot in the city if just because of that whole situation. I don't want to get into any of that, but he's probably the only other option. And if the Saints continue to go down a path and they get to two and four or two and six or something like that, I think they probably call him. Hopefully, it doesn't come to that. But if you're waiting till two and five to make a change, you you should be gone. Dennis Allen is putting his job in the hands of basically P. Carmichael. I have no problem with Dennis Allen as the head coach, defensive minded head coach. I have no problem with. My problem is he's not making a change with the offense. Um, Mike Tomlin, Bill Belichick, and some other really good defensive minded head coaches are in the NFL some of the best and greatest uh, head coaches in NFL history are defensive minded to coach. I ha head coaches. I have no issue with it. I have an issue though when your defense is allowing 10 points a game and your offense is losing because they can't score a touchdown. Like, you gotta make some changes. So I think they can get better, yes. Is it panic mode? Yes, but there needs to be a sense of urgency. There needs to be like, we need to fix this now. From the coaching, to the players as well. The players have dirty hands as well. There's only a few players who I thought actually wanted to win on Sunday. Um, we're going to get in, into all that in our film. I don't want to talk too much about it, but um, it just feels like this offense just has no identity. They can't run the ball effectively very well, and when they have, it's already like too late in the game. They ran the ball with Kamara uh, somewhat pretty good in, against Tampa Bay, but it was like the third quarter. Like, why are you waiting so long to run the football? Um, they haven't been able to run the ball effectively. They haven't been able to pass the ball effectively really outside of the final minutes of the fourth quarter in the first two games. Um, and why is that? Why are they not being effective? Why don't they have an identity? It's because Pete Carmichael is not setting up their players to have success. Derek Carr's, all of his passes basically are, okay, here's the hashes and here's the numbers. All of the throws are out here. They're all outside. Derek Carr has a fucked up shoulder and you're telling him to throw it all the way down. Like those are long ass throws. Derek Carr is most effective when he's throwing over the middle, taking check downs, finding guys over the middle. That's a word guys like Michael Crabtree, who he worked with or played with. Devontae Adams, um, I'm missing one. Maybe Hunter Renfro a little bit. Uh, I feel like I'm missing Amari Cooper. Those are guys who had effective... Um, skills over the middle and Pete Carmichael is not utilizing their skills they're not letting Derek Carr do what he does best they're not letting Michael Thomas do what he does best shout out to Ross J Jackson for this stuff but Michael Thomas has run more outbreaking routes than in breaking routes that is a that is a malpractice Michael Thomas is one of the best receivers in NFL history like going over the middle and making plays being physical and you're telling him to run Chris Olave routes and Chris, I feel like we've seen Michael Thomas run more go routes than slants. He's run 10 slants, by the way, according to Nick Underhill. Malpractice. That is malpractice. It feels like we've seen Michael Thomas run more go routes than slants. And we've seen Chris Olave and Rashid Shahid, Rashid Shahid run more drags and slants than go routes. In what scenario or what world should that ever be happening? I get you got to mix it up a little bit. I have no issue with having occasional plays or Thomas is going deep and the speedy guys are underneath but it's every play and then every play 
all the rats are going outside and nothing in the middle. That's where Derek Carr and Michael Thomas do their best. Tampa Bay's defense is leaving the middle of the field wide open. And there's just nothing there for Derek Carr to throw to. He's just not setting up his players to have success. The Houston Texans have a rookie quarterback, rookie head coach, a new offensive coordinator. Half of their offensive line is injured. They don't really have like a wide receiver one who has a big name. And yet they can score 24 points a game. You want to know why? Because their team sets their players up for success. Um, the tight ends, um, it's hard to set, kind of set them up for success because they've had to help um, chip and block and stuff like that. But Jimmy Graham has six red zone routes. Six. The six foot seven red zone monster who is probably one of the best red zone targets in the NFL right now, NFL history, and you decide to put him on six red zone routes. I just don't know why. The Saints are already struggling in the red zone. Why are you putting one of your best and biggest red zone threats in for six plays? Why are you not designing plays for Michael Thomas? I I don't get it. Now, last season, we gave Pete Carmichael shit for the creativity and lack of screens. Well, I can surely tell you that that has changed this season. I don't know if it's for the better, but it has changed. They've ran a lot of screens, and none of them have worked. I can tell you that. Um, let me think. The creativity, I'll give some props. to. That fourth down and one play on the opening drive, that was a cool play. They ran a play that like Taysom Hill took the snap, handed it off to Derek Carr, and pitch it to Kamara. That play is a cool play design, but you got it fucking flipped. Have Derek Carr take the snap and hand it off to Taysom Hill. That way there's the element of surprise. Derek Carr isn't running shit. What? Don't get, just... Pico Michael is not setting his players up for success. The only reason why I think... He hasn't been relieved of his, relieved of his um, play calling duties as one. Ronald Curry has very almost no experience doing it. And does Dennis Allen want to put his job and everyone else's jobs on the line on someone who's never done this before? Probably not. The, for John Gruden, it feels like the only way he comes in is if they're in like emergency break the glass scenario. You're scoring six points a game. You haven't scored a touchdown in three weeks that kind of shit like if you don't win this game you're going to be fired it feels like in that scenario you bring in John Gruden but until then Pete Carmichael is probably going to be staying and I guess the question is can this offense be any better I mean I sure hope so you just scored nine points and you tell me you can't be better now I think they can be better I think Dennis Allen knows that the offense has to be better but I don't know, This Pete Carmichael has not shown me anything in the past year and a half that show, that can convince me that things are going to change. This is just going to be a team that scores 17-ish points a game. That's just the reality. Until we're proven wrong, we should not be convinced that they're going to change. Now, we're only four games in. Things can change. Maybe something clicks. Maybe the Saints needed this loss to figure things out. Sometimes you need that. It took the Broncos last season getting shit on on Christmas Day to fire Nathaniel Hackett. And then they got they bring someone in. The Broncos look better. And then they bring in Sean Payton. Sometimes you need an ass whooping to figure out, hey, this shit's not working. Figure it out. But I think they're going to get get it fixed this week. No, they're playing Bill Belichick's defense. And they don't have Matthew Judon and Christian Gonzalez. Yeah, those are two big names. But guess what? Tampa Bay didn't have Jamel Dean and uh, Kalaje Kansi. Green Bay didn't have Jair Alexander and someone else. And the injuries on the op opposite teams have been big names, but they haven't mattered the past two weeks because guess what? The Saints haven't been able to capitalize on them. Whew. Man, it is rough. Do you really think that Pete Carmichael this week is going to get things changed? And this offense, is, this offense is going to look magically better against Bill Belichick? 
I don't care who they got. Bill Belichick is a defensive mastermind. He's going to have a field day against us. That's... Do I think we can win this game? Yes. Am I confident that we can score 17 points? No. This is going to be... This game is going to be 5-3. to three. Whoever can... Whoever can get the safety first is going to win. So, whew, whew, this is going to be a very exciting game. It, it's just P. Carmichael. I've already mentioned it, but he's just not setting his guys up for success. And the only way things are going to change in this offense, and the only way they're going to get better, is if he does that. Utilize Kendra Miller more. Utilize the running game more. I felt like we didn't see the running game until the third quarter against Tampa Bay. At that point, you're already too late. Stop doing passes only on the outsides involve the middle of the field stop calling hell fucking mary on third and one and run the football if you want to see more of those stats or if you want to see some of those plays that we're talking about check out the film review that we're gonna have a drop in tomorrow just just want to put that in there i've already mentioned a few times but if you really want to see how bad this offense looked on sunday check out that film video we do one every week so hit that subscribe button for weekly film videos because I don't know if I can keep doing this, man. <laughs> um, you want to know what else is wrong with this offense? The plays that Pete Carmichael calls are basically set up for one person. They're one read plays. So if that person isn't there, guess what? Carr's going to throw it away or trying to extend the play. And there, there's one specific play where one guy, one in, Olave, I believe, went in motion and he ran a crossing route. Two guys, Michael Thomas and Rashid Shahid, ran both go routes, both in the same area, by the way, which makes no sense. We've seen that way too many times this season where two guys are in the same spot. No. And then you have a drag route. It just feels like the place that P. Carmichael was calling is for everyone to clear out space and card to just throw it to one guy. And when that one guy isn't there, guess what? You have nothing to fucking do. And it's not just all P. Carmichael. Derek Carr in the offense also has dirty hands. Uh, Chris Olave gave minimal effort if any effort at all um Derek Carr definitely missed a few reads his shoulder there's only a few throws in there where I thought maybe the shoulder affected it affected him um but then again they were doing quick passes really early on and stuff like that which I'll give Pete Carmichael credit there he did a good job of getting Pete Derek Carr um quick passes and getting the ball out of his hands quick not letting him take hits I'll give Pete Carmichael that but when you run the same fucking plays the whole game and you can't throw a slant to michael thomas on first and down and 10 then we have an issue if you really want to know how bad this offense has been christian mccaffrey has ha, christian mccaffrey had four touchdowns sunday against the cardinals the saints offense has four touchdowns tony jones jr has two rashichi heat has one jimmy graham has one that is it the saints have five total touchdowns on the year but four offensive Cowboys defense has four total touchdowns. The Saints offense has four. And they have more turnovers than touchdowns. This is a sad. This offense does not look better than it did last year with Andy Dalton. And I don't think it's a skill issue. I definitely don't think it's a skill issue. Do I think the players have dirty hands? Yes. But is it skill? No. Why are you not? We already went over this. And it's not, and it's not just me. The players... I know I've talked to a few players. You may not trust me. I'm not going to say their names because out of respect, I've talked to a few players and they don't like Pete Carmichael. Back when they brought him, when they brought him back during the off season, they were like, why? I don't get it. Do they not see this past season? Like the players aren't happy. Alvin Kamara after the, uh, after the game Sunday kind of hinted that something needs to change. The talent isn't there. Um, credit to New Orleans football for that video, by the way. If you get if you get the the if you get the joke there, then then you're on Twitter. That's for sure. Um, here's that clip of Alvin Kamara talking. How difficult is it because you guys aren't accustomed to this kind of kind of production? Um, I mean now we are. <laughs> it's it's been two years since I mean or however however long since we had that offense that was rolling. Now we kind of we kind of in this rut of you know it's it's. It, what it is right now, what you see. So, um, like I said, we gotta find it. We gotta have some conversations about something, cause I don't, I don't like losing. For you, with 24 touches in this game, how did you feel? Great. Great. None. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and obviously, not everyone might feel that way. Derek Carr and Michael Thomas both put the blame on the players and themselves in the execution. And it is a little bit of everything. But Alvin Kamara is right. This offense has been shit basically since Drew Brees retired. Um, like The last time the Saints had a good offense consistently was probably 2018. 2019 was boring as shit. Um, 2020 was basically Brees' last year and he couldn't throw 20 yards downfield. 2021 we had that exciting Packers game but that was about it that wasn't consistent and then the, here we are so Alvin Kamara is right it's just something needs to be done they need to have a talk something has to change I, what will it be I don't know maybe you I don't know throw a slant to Michael Thomas maybe you throw an in-breaking route to Rashid Shahid in, in stride and let him run instead of you know just throwing it to him on a screen pass and kind of get him in stride a little bit let Olave and Shahid make plays out of the backfield week one I thought P. Carmichael did an excellent job of creativity he had Olave running option routes out of the backfield he did that twice they went like two for two for like 40 yards on those plays where is that you you're telling me you can't get a mismatch of a linebacker and a safety against Chris Olave or Rashid Shahid out of the backfield you literally did it two weeks three weeks ago that's what I'm saying. Pete Carmichael this season has shown flashes of better creativity and usage of screens, I should say. I'll give him that. But then he just doesn't use it. We've seen, if we show 10 plays, one of those plays might be creative. Like, use your creativity consistently. And if you really want to know what, like, how kind of bad his play calling is, when the Saints have gone in the two-minute offense, they haven't done it really at all, but they did this past game against Tampa Bay kind of um, in the fourth quarter, and they did it against the Titans in the before halftime. When they go in the two-minute offense, no huddle, and everyone's just like kind of going, and he's not calling plays, the offense moves. But then when he throws it, when Derek Carr throws an incomplete pass and he's calling in plays, the offense automatically stops working. There, there are signs and signals everywhere flaring at the Saints coaching staff in front office that something with this coordinator or this play calling needs to change if the players aren't happy guess what they're checked out they're not going to want to play for you they're not going to want to basically help you win because they want you gone do I I believe the players love DA I believe that do they like Pete Carmichael no I, I do not think they do I believe that players want Carmichael Don gone um or at least not play calling plays anymore. Um, it is what it is. I that is it for this episode. Um, I don't know how long we are. I think we're at like maybe like twenty five minutes. I appreciate it if you made it this far though. Hit that subscribe button. We're pretty close to one thousand subs, so I would just appreciate any support you can show. Oh, what am I doing? Um, I on Instagram I put out a post saying, um, come drop some comments i want to answer a few of the the questions you guys have so we're gonna answer some of these questions um a lot of them are about p carmichael which this whole video is based about so i'm not going to answer basically the ones i've already answered um why is the play calling so conservative and predictable uh it's predictable because they run the same shit every week and it's so conservative because I don't know, maybe he doesn't trust their car yet. I Or maybe they're still trying to get used to each other. You had Michael Thomas coming back from an injury. Rashid Shahid missed three weeks. Derek Carr is a new QB in a new system. Offensive line wasn't working the first few weeks. So there's a few different variables as to maybe why your play calling is a little bit safer. Um, but it doesn't excuse you from not getting Michael Thomas on a slant. Like, he broke the record basically he didn't run a slant 149 times but that slant route that's a basically an easy seven yards I, I, um let me see how much longer do you think p carmichael and da have a job here well if they keep going down this path if you get to two and five two and six i think mickey loomis is gonna fire people i don't think he'll do it though until we get to the bye week i think if we have a losing record at the bye week a significant if it's like 
four and five or something like that maybe not but if it's like three and six or seven whatever the record would be at week 11 then i think mickey loomis is going to fire him um but if it works out then we don't have this conversation but if it doesn't guess what we have a new head coach and um offensive play caller and i would assume darren rizzi the special teams coach would probably take over as like the intern in term head coach i really like him um do i think p carmichael can turn it around no he hasn't shown really anything that would make me believe so or convince me otherwise i hope he does there's way too much talent on this team not to i think we've seen flashes of creativity but we haven't seen it we, I think outside of the creativity, he hasn't done anything well. He just hasn't done anything well. Um, um, was the lack of pressure by the D-line a product of the Butts, Bucks O-line or our pass rush being below average both? I think those first two weeks when we played the Titans who had four new offensive linemen starting and the, and the Panthers who have one of the worst offensive lines in the league, I think those first two games definitely gave us a false sense of hope. And I said in one of my pods, don't get too excited. They're about to play the Packers, one of the better offensive lines. Going into Tampa Bay, I was like, they're going against one of the better offensive lines. They've only allowed three sacks. And um, it, it shows the Saints have, what, two sacks in the past two weeks, and they had seven sacks in the first two games. So it is a product of both the D-line being average and the other team's offensive lines just being really good. Um, mm, I'm trying to see if there's any other ones. Uh, what happened to A.T. Perry? Um, I've talked about this numerous times, but A.T. Perry is wide receiver five. He doesn't run block or play special teams and if you can't do that at wide receiver five, you have no role on this team unless someone gets injured. It's like Jalen Smith. He doesn't play special teams. So unless Pete Warner or Demario Davis get injured, he would basically just be on the bench. A.T. Perry doesn't play special teams, doesn't run block very well. There's no really role for him on this team unless someone gets injured. Hopefully he doesn't come to that. Hopefully we do get a look at him at some point this year. But um, I don't know if we will. Why isn't the offense playing to the sticks? No idea. I just... We're going to go over that in our film breakdown in the next video, but... It just doesn't make sense. There's no answer for that. It's something you have to ask Pete Carmichael. Um, now being tuned to what do I predict this season record to be? I still think this is a 9-ish win team, but I think... I mean, right now, teams are looking at us on their schedule as the easy opponent, as opposed to when the game uh, before the season started, we were looking at our schedule thinking we're playing easy opponents. Um, I still think they can be a nine-ish win team, but we'll have to see. I don't think we're in panic mode yet, but at the same time, they need to get their shit together now. Hmm... When will the Saints front office start thinking about what's best for the team instead of what's based off of familiarity? Well, if the Saints keep going this way and they start losing um, ticket sales, jersey sales, whatever, if they start losing money, then they'll probably make a change. Obviously, Mickey Loomis is one of the better GMs because he doesn't make decisions based off of immediate emotions. He takes time to evaluate what's going on. And I appreciate that, and I appreciate the logic behind that. But obviously money talks and if the sales and stuff like that start going down in the dome the jerseys and stuff like that concession all of it goes starts going down then they need to probably talk about it. and it's sad that the money will dictate that but i'm sure mickey loomis is smart enough to realize if you're two and six you need to start thinking okay we might need a clean house and it won't just be da and pete carmichael it would probably be everyone i would just, the only people i see staying would be a ronald curry Darren Rizzi and I think like Kevin Autry or whatever. I think he's like an assistant somewhere. Um, but yeah, that's what I have to say about the offensive line. Uh, how much stock 
would slash should we put in the successful offensive showing against the Patriots without Judon or Gonzalez? Would it be a step in the right direction or, or a bad or just playing a bad Pats defense? Well, when you're playing the Patriots in general over the past 20 years, they have Bill Belichick. So no matter who's out there, he will make them look good defensively. Um, obviously, no Judon is Ian Gonzalez is huge for the Saints, but if they can. I think if they can show any sort of improvement, yes, that's a step in the right direction. But we saw it last season; they take a step in the right direction and then they go two steps back, like going from the. What game am I thinking of? Like after beating the Raiders, they have a really good game plan after, er, and they show really good stuff, and then they have the two worst games of the season against the Ravens and the Steelers, and then they show a really good showcase against the Rams. It feels like they figured it out using Taysom significantly. Then they play the 49ers and drop zero, and then they blow a lead to Tampa Bay. So um, it would be a step in the right direction, but we would need to see it more consistently. Um, I think Pete is getting fancy with the play calls because of of the weapons he has and his dot, dot, dot. But don't have time for plays to, because the offensive line. Okay, Sunday, I feel like Pete did try to get too fancy with that like Derek Carr play, and he's tried to do it a few times. Offensive line was fine Sunday. There was no scenario in pass protection really where I thought it was their fault that Derek Carr got sacked. Now, obviously, they did get beat a few times, mainly James Hurst. But overall, um, I just think the play calling was shitty. I don't know if I see any other questions. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, all of them are basically about Pete Carmichael. And um, I feel like this video probably answered the majority of those questions. So take a, now that we're officially done with this video, I appreciate the support. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time where we will be breaking down the film to the Saints in the Buccaneers game.